Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this duck design, which is already on my channel, but I'm updating the tutorial. So this is going to be another one of the few designs where I update the tutorial because I'm just not happy with the tutorial that's on my channel. Um, and there's a couple different reasons for why I'm updating this one, which I'll get into in a second. But if you're just here to make the design, here is my duck design. I love it. This is actually the most popular tutorial on my channel. It's got like a hundred thousand views, which is insane. I guess a lot of people like ducks, so yeah. But it is also, that tutorial also gets a lot of complaints. A lot of people said it's confusing and they struggle, so I've decided to update it for that reason, as well as I've changed my duck pattern a bit from that video. Um, so uh, I've been making ducks to put on Etsy because I just restocked my Etsy with random things, so I decided to make some ducks. And when I revisited my duck design and followed the pattern that was in the description of that video, I realized that I didn't like it and I didn't do something right. So then I went back to my duck design, I messed around with it, and yeah, the pattern was wrong, as in like, it didn't look like the- So this is the first original duck I made, and I didn't write down the pattern for this one because I was just messing around. And then I kept trying to recreate this pattern and I struggled so much. Um... And I thought I got it right when I filmed that tutorial, but then when I went back, it wasn't right. So, I revisited that the duck design again, and I think I'm fi I fixed the pattern. I also made it a little bit better, I think, because it has more of a... You can see, like, a swoop. This one's a little bit flat, but I like the little swoop. So, yeah, this is the final version of the pattern. I'm finally happy with it. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm going to be showing you how to make this today. So that's mainly the reasons I'm redoing it, is just because I get a lot of complaints from that tutorial, just because a lot of people say I didn't explain well, as well as I fixed the pattern. I like this duck design better. So it is a little bit different than my other duck design that's on this channel, but I like this one better, so yeah. Anyways, I guess we'll get started. Um, this is one of my easier designs, I think. There's just not much attaching or anything. Um, the only things we attach are the eyes and the beak. So you're going to want to get whatever colors you want for that. For the beak today, I'm going to be doing orange. And then for the eyes, I'm going to be using beads again. And then you're just going to want to get whatever color you want for your duck. Um, I don't have the band count at this moment. I always forget to do it before I film. So if you want to know the band count, it'll be in the description. And yeah. For my duck today, though, I'm going to be using this magenta color. Which I forgot to take out of the bag. Okay. So we will get started. Um, you're also going to want to get a C-clip or just something to mark your rows with. I always use a C-clip. I'm going to be using a C-clip again today. And then you're going to want a hook, crochet hook, rainbow loom hook, whatever you want to use. I'll be using my double-ended hook. I just really like this hook. So, yeah. I'm trying to think if we covered everything, and I think we did. So, yeah. I'm just picking up some bands and then we'll get started. Also, as always, the pattern and everything is in the description if you want to check that out. And now I think that's it. <laughs> okay. So, to start, we're going to be doing a triples cap band with five stitches in it. So, you, if you don't know what that is, I'll be showing you right now. But, basically, we're going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So, this is one, two... Three. So that's three times. So we're going to be putting five stitches in this cap band, like I said. So you're going to start by pulling a band through the whole cap band. Put both ends back on your hook. Push the back loop over the front loop. Like that. And then now we're going to go back in through the cap band. So just make sure you go through the whole cap band. We're going to pull a band through just the cap band, so not this last loop. Put both ends back on your hook. Push the back loop over the front loop. And then push the, last, the loop from last time over as well. So we're going to do that exact same thing we just did three more times. So we have five stitches in total in the cap band. So I'll show you again. So we're going to go back into the cap band. You're going to pull a band through just the cap band. You're going to put both ends back on your hook. 
you're going to push the back loop over the front loop, and then you'll push this loop from last time over. And we just repeat this two more times, so we have five stitches in the cat band in total. And if you lose track of how many stitches you have, I'll show you how to count that in a second. But I'm going to just really quickly do two more stitches. So we're just doing the same thing. Like that. So I know I have five stitches, but if you want to double check on how you have five... Uh, speaking. Um, if you want to double check if you have five stitches, what you're going to do is you're going to start by counting this loop on your hook. And then you're just going to count backwards. So this is one, two, three, four, and then this one's five. Like that. So once you've made sure you have five stitches in your cap band, instead of going back into the cap band, you're gonna go through this first loop. So make sure you're make sure you're not going through this one, because this one sometimes looks like the first loop, but this one is actually the first loop. So you're just gonna go through the first loop, and you're pretty much gonna do the same thing. So you're just gonna pull a band through the loop, both ends back on your hook, push the back one over the front one. And then push the loop from last time over as well. And then this is the one we'll be putting our C-clip on. Like that. So that was the first row. Um, and I kind of think that's the hardest part just because of how tight it is. I know, like, I feel like the starting part is always the worst part if you're a beginner. But yeah. So for the next row, we're going to be increasing everything. And what that basically means is every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. So I will show you what I mean by that. So all an increase is, is basically you're putting two stitches in every loop all the way around. So this one already has one stitch in this loop. So we're going to go back in and we're just going to make another stitch. So just like before. that and that would be an increase so I'll show you again in the next loop so we'll go through the loop make a stitch and you go back in you do another stitch and that's going to be an increase so we're just going to keep doing this all the way around we're just going to be putting two stitches in every loop until we get to the C clip I'm really trying to explain slower in this tutorial I have a tendency to just go fast, so I'm trying to not do that, but we'll see how it goes. Sometimes I just have energy, and I feel like you can really tell when that happens in my tutorials. <laughs> it's not good. Once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the loop that has a C-clip on it. And then once you finish making the stitch, you're just, you're just going to take the C-clip off this loop and move it up to the one that's on your hook. Like that. So now if you count around, you should be at 10 loops. So we'll start again by counting the one on our hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like that. Okay, so now the next two rows are going to be a bit repetitive. So we're going to do two rows of just single stitches. So we're going to do two rows normal. And at the end of each of these two rows, you should still be at 10 loops. So I'll show you. I'm just picking up bands again. Okay. So, like I said, we're going to do two rows of single stitches. So all we're going to do is we're basically just going to put one stitch in each loop all the way around until we get to the C-clip. And we do this for two rows. So we're just doing one stitch per loop. Until we get to the C-clip. Okay. And then once again, once you get to the C-clip, you'll just make a stitch on the one that has the C-clip on it, and then you'll move the C-clip from the band up onto the one on your hook. So that was one row of single stitches. Like I said, we have to do two, so we're going to do one more. Um, you can count to make sure you still have 10 stitches at this point, but I'm just going to count at the end of the two rows. So I'm going to do the second row of single stitches, and then I'll count. You know, uh, it's funny about this design, though, because I don't know if I said 
in the other tutorial, like, how I came up with it, but I was literally just watching BattleBots on the couch with my, with my little brother because we watched BattleBots together. And I was like, huh, wouldn't it be fun if I made a duck? So I just made this duck design for fun, and I think it's funny that it's, like, the most popular design on my channel. It's, I feel like, for me, it's always the designs that I think, oh, this one's not gonna be popular, and then it's like, whoa, it's so popular. It's just hard to guess. And I mean, I don't make, ever make designs thinking, ah, this one's gonna be popular, but... I just think it's funny how I was just like, oh, I'll just make this for fun. I did it in like one try and then, th well, technically <laughs> it took me more than one try to get it right, but I literally made it in like one try and was like, oh, that looks like a cute duck. So yeah. Anyways, I finished the second row of single stitches. So now we're going to count to make sure we still have 10 loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that. Okay, I was just double checking my pattern. So for the next row, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be decreasing everything. And this is similar to the row where we increased everything, except for this time, all the stitches we do are going to be decreases. So I'll show you what a decrease is. So what a decrease is, is you're going to grab the inside part of one loop, and then you're going to go to the next loop and grab the back part. And then you just make a stitch on this. And that'll be a decrease. So I'll show you again. So you grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and then you just make a stitch. So we're going to keep doing this all the way around. So you grab inside part, then you go to the next loop and grab the back, and we just do this all the way around. So when you get to the one before the C-clip, um, you don't want to do a decrease. So this one you'll just do a single stitch. And then you'll do a single stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And then you'll move your C-clip up. And that'll be it for this row. So at the end of this row you should have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you should be at six loops. Like that. So all we did is we decreased everything. It's just because of where the last decrease lands. We don't want to do a decrease on the one that has a C-clip on it. So that's why we did a single stitch and then we just did the one with a seagull on it, if that makes sense. But yeah. So for the next row we're going to be... Uh, my pattern's a mess, hold up. We're going to be increasing everything. So just like the row at the start where every single stitch we did it was an increase, we're going to do the exact same thing again. I'm just picking up some more bands. But yeah. So just like the row before, every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. So we're going to go back into this first one, this first loop, this one. And we're going to do another stitch so that way it's an increase, like that. And then we're just going to go around doing increases all the way around. And if you forgot what an increase is, it's basically you just put two stitches in one loop. So, And we just do this all the way around. Ah. Nearly lost that loop. Is my camera unfocused? No, we're good. So like I said, we're just increasing all the way around. Mm, I keep letting go of loops on accident. No. There we go. Increase. And then once you get to the C clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the band that has a C clip on it. And then we're going to move it up. Like that. So now if you count around, you should be at 12 loops. So once again, we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. So for the next row, um, let me make sure I'm in the right place. Hold up. Okay, I was just making sure we're in the right spot because I wrote my pattern a little weird, but okay, I know what we're doing now. I just always like triple check my pattern so I don't mess up. But basically, what we're going to be doing this next row, and it's only one weird stitch, is basically we're doing all single stitches, but there's this one bit that we do that's a little bit different. And we do it different so that way we can make this butt piece, basically this part that sticks out. So that's what we're going to be doing this row. 
and I'll show you how to do it. And I'm just picking up bands again. I should always pick up bands when I pause the video, but then I always forget. So you get to enjoy me picking up bands. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, we're going to be doing that, we're going to be doing kind of like a thing where we chain up a few to make the butt, or the sticky outy part, or his tail, whatever you want to call it. So basically on the second stitch, which is the next stitch, because this is the first stitch, if you've done any of my, of my other patterns, you know that I always count the C-clip, the one with the C-clip on it as the first one. So in the second stitch, we're going to chain up two, so I'll show you how to do that, so you're just going to chain up one. So you just pull, pull a band through and then put both ends on your hook. And you'll do that again. Two. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull a band through, put both ends back on your hook, and then push the back one over the front one. And pull it a little tight and we're just going to leave this hanging a little bit. Like that. And then we're going to come back into this first part of the chain. So I'm trying to make sure you can see. So here's the top part. We're going to come into this bottom part of the chain. We're going to go through and we're going to be putting two stitches in the bottom part of this chain. So you'll just make a stitch, go back in, make another stitch. So there's two stitches in the bottom part of that chain. And then we're going to put this loop back on our hook and you can loosen it up a little if you tightened it a little too tight. And then you'll, once you put it back on your hook you'll just push this back loop over the front loop. And then we're going to make three more stitches in this top part. So one, two, three. And then we're going to go back into this first loop, well this first chain, and we're going to do two more stitches. So one, two, so now if you look back at what we did, it should look something like this, and you can kind of see that there should be four stitches in this top, and then two on each side of this first loop, so it's like four and four kind of, is how I like to think about it. Because we have two on this side, four at the top, and then two on this side. Like that. And now we'll just go into the next loop, and we'll do a single stitch. And basically all we're going to do is we're just going to do single stitches the rest of the way until we get to the C-clip. So that was the hardest part for this row. Uh, I hope I explained that well. I think I did. But yeah. So we're just going to do single stitches the rest of the way until we get to the C-clip. You know, I don't know if I really, like, like honestly doing this duck, um, like refiguring out the pattern... Because I feel like I didn't do it right in that first tutorial. Um, I think I made the bottom part a little too big. So when I came back to like revisit it and fix it, I made so many ducks. Like I'm not even joking. I probably made like 10 different ducks. I've sold a batch on Etsy already. And all of those were me trying to figure out how I did the butt. Um, or how to like make the butt look better on the duck. So <laughs> there was those 10 ducks I did. And then I did like four more this week just trying to figure it out. So... I'm kind of glad that I finally am happy with this duck pattern because it's been a struggle. Also, the first time I made the tutorial when I was trying to figure out what I did, because whenever I design, most of the time, the first time, I like never write down what I do. So, the first time I was trying to figure it out, I think I had like six ducks as well. So, I'm just so happy that this duck design is finally like where, to the point that I like it, you know? Anyways, so I made a stitch on the one with a C-clip on it and I moved it up already. But now if we count around, we should be at 19, I think. I thought it would be 18. I guess it's 19. Okay, so let's count. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I guess we do have 19. I can't math. Um, so you should be at 19 loops. So if you count it around, you should be at 19. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to do a row around of single stitches. So we're just going to go around doing single stitches. And at the end of this row, we should still be at 19 loops. So we're just going to do 
row of single stitches all the way around. So we're just doing single stitches all the way around. Now this duck's a little bit bigger, so it takes a second to go all the way around this guy. I'm trying to think if I have anything else to talk about. You know, I did debate filming this tutorial tomorrow just because I was planning on painting my nails tonight. I'm like, Ugh, I could do the tutorial with painted nails because I kind of like when my nails look pretty for tutorials. But then I was like, nah, I have time today. I might as well just film it. I feel kind of bad though because I know lately I've kind of been slacking on tutorials. <laughs> February just kind of got away from me. Like, I don't even know what I was doing half this month, but it got away from me. Like, all of a sudden, we're at the end of the month, and I'm like, oh, shoot. Um, so that was fun. I've been looking into time management skills and things and tricks because, oh, my God, I've decided that my time management skills are just awful. Like, I try my best, but I just, my sense of time mixed with, like, how quickly I forget to do things is, it's just awful. So I've been looking into time management things and I'm hoping they help, but I haven't tried any of them yet. It's because a lot of it's like requires planning, but then I never want to do the planning. <laughs> so it's not good. Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the band that has the C-clip on it. And move it up. Like that. So now if we count around, we should be at 19 loops. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So the exact same amount of loops as last row. Okay. So this row we're going to be doing two increases and literally only two. Sorry, my camera was about to time out and I didn't notice. So sorry if there's a weird cut there. I was just like, oh shoot, it's about to time out. Um... But basically, for this next row, we're going to be doing two increases, like I said. So we're going to increase on the second and the sixth. So if you've done other tutorials with me, you know what that means. Otherwise, I'll show you what I mean. It's pretty simple. So basically, we're what we're going to do is we're basically doing two increases on the side of the tail. So like I said, we're going to do it on the second. So we're going to do it on this loop. And then we're going to do three single stitches. And then we're going to do another increase. So, yeah. So like I said, we're going to increase on the second, so this is the first, so the next one is the second loop. Um, if you don't want to count like I do, basically the one after the C-clip you're going to increase on, so we're going to increase on this one, so we're going to do an increase. And then like I said, we're going to do three single stitches, so one, two, three. And then we're going to increase again. Like that. And then the rest of the way is going to just be single stitches. So I need to pick up more bands. <laughs> and we just do single stitches the rest of the way. Which you can already get started on. I'm just... Okay. Like I said, we're just going to do single stitches until we get to the C-clip. You know, my voice is already kind of tired. Not from this tutorial, but because I was talking a lot yesterday too. Because I'm finally back at work and I'm so excited because I have a job again. And it's been interesting getting back to work because, like... Obviously, I worked there before. I just kind of took a two-month break because in December I was sick and then I had to get my COVID booster and it was a whole thing. But it's been interesting getting back because, like, I already know how to do everything. But then, I don't know. I just feel like I have to get back into the groove of working. But I'm glad I have a job again, which also kind of works out because I really wanted to do a giveaway for 5K. Like, I don't know. When when we hit 5K? I think we hit it in January. Did we hit it in January? I don't remember. Like I said, my sense of time needs help, <laughs> but um, I think we hit it in January, so I've been planning, I was hoping to do a giveaway, but then I was kind of jobless, and shipping is always a lot, because I don't like to live, leave, like, international loomers out, so I was like, oh, just wait until I get my job back, so then I can pay for shipping, so now that I have my job back, I can 
start planning the giveaway, which is exciting. But yeah. Anyways, after that last row, we should be at 21 loops. So if we count around, we should have 21. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay. So this next row is going to be very similar to what we did last row. So instead of increasing two specific stitches, we're going to decrease two stitches. And the ones we're going to decrease are going to be basically these four loops at the top. So these four. Does that make sense? Let me double check that real quick. Okay, I double checked and the pattern's right. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do one. Oh, let me undo that. Sorry, I was testing it. But basically we're going to do one single stitch and then we're going to do two decreases in a row. And then it's just going to be single stitches the rest of the way. So we have the one that has our C-clip on it. We're going to do one single stitch. And then we're going to do two decreases in a row. So just like before, you grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. And we'll do that again. So you grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. And then the rest of the way until the C-clip is just going to be single stitches. Okay, I'm <laughs> making sure we're in the right spot. I just don't want to mess up. But yeah, I think we're doing this right. I'm pretty sure we are. I feel like when I sound unsure, I've gotten some comments that are like, why does she not even know what she's doing? And I'm like, I don't know, but I never do. <laughs> do I trust my own pattern? Not enough. I'm really excited to do a giveaway for 5k though. I always have such a fun time. I'm honestly debating because at this point, what are we in? We're in February. I can just hold off until May and then do it in the summer because I like doing like, you've seen how I've done my contest. If you've been on my channel for a while or even if you scroll back to when I did the three, when I did, I did a 3.5 giveaway and I kind of had like a little contest and it was fun. I don't know if I want to do that again, but I always feel like it's hard for me to do that when people are in school so I, I'm debating just waiting and like just holding off on doing a giveaway and then doing it in the summer because I love doing giveaways in the summer I feel like I have like a yearly giveaway in the summer at this point I think I've done it for two or two years two years I don't know if I've done it for two years but I always I don't know it's an idea I might just like hold off on the giveaway until summer just so I can do another like fun contest thing maybe even a loom game I don't know it's just to me, like, just, like, giveaway giveaways are normal where it's like, oh, just like this post. It's, like, not as fun. So I always try to make my giveaways fun. So that's why I'm debating, just holding off until the summer and being like, I'll do a giveaway then. Because I think that's going to end on, it honestly end up being better. Or I could do, like, a small giveaway for 5k and then just do, like, a big thing in the summer. So, <laughs> so many options. Um, but yeah. So after that last row, we should have 19 stitches again. So if you count around, you should be at 19. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Like that. So now we're, for this next row, we're going to be decreasing every third. And what that basically means is we're going to do two single stitches and then a decrease. And then two single stitches and then a decrease. And we just keep doing that all the way around. So this will be our first single stitch. This next one will be the second one. And then the next one's going to be a decrease. And we just keep repeating this all the way around. So we'll do two single stitches. So one, two. And we'll do a decrease. And we just keep doing this. So one. Two, then a decrease, once we start decreasing this guy really comes together fast. I feel like it's just those couple rows where we have like a lot of stitches is where it kind of takes a while. Okay, so your last decrease is going to be on the one that has a C-clip on it, but we're just going to do it. So we'll just do a decrease on these two loops. 
and then you'll make a stitch and you'll just move the c-clip onto the span like that so now if we count around we should be at 14 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 why do i have 15? did i count right hold up we gotta count again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, I have 14. I just can't count. Okay. So for the next row, we're going to be decreasing every other. And what I mean by that is we're just going to do a single stitch and then a decrease. So we're basically just alternating between doing a single stitch and then doing a decrease. And we just do this all the way around. And after this row is when we're going to stuff him. So, because this first stitch we did was a decrease, the next one's going to be a single stitch. And then we'll do a decrease. And then we'll do a single stitch. And then we'll do a decrease. And you just keep alternating between doing a single stitch and a decrease. Until it's closed. A single stitch and a decrease and a single stitch. So technically this one's a single stitch so the next one should be a decrease but we're just going to do a single stitch on the one that has a c-clip on it and then we'll move it up like that. Now it's looking like a duck <laughs> but we're going to stuff our duck right now so you just want to get whatever you, oh, there's a random brown band, but you're just going to want to get whatever you want for stuffing. I always use cotton balls, so I'm going to be using cotton balls again today. And you can take your hook out to stuff him. The C-clip the should hold it as long as you don't mess with it too much. You also got to make sure to stuff shuffing, shove stuffing all the way to the head. Um, it's kind of hard. I think I overstuffed the pink duck I made's head. He's got a really big head. So make sure you don't overstuff the head. There we go. Stuffing. I never know if I should pause to stuff. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Depends on how I'm feeling. I guess we're stuffing on camera today. I think there was a couple tutorials that I paused the video just to stuff it. I really need to write when to stuff in my patterns because um, I always forget. I feel like most people know you're supposed to stuff it before it gets too tight. But I I always forget and then it'll be like almost closed and there's like the smallest hole and I'm shoving stuffing in. It's bad. Okay, I think we just need a tiny bit more stuffing. I'm going to accidentally overstuff this duck. A little bit more. <laughs> There we go. That's a good amount of stuffing. It also helps with the tail. I just like to pinch it and then like push it up a little bit. Just helps it give the shape. You don't want to pinch hard or anything. Literally, if you just like shove it a little bit, it'll it'll go. I don't even know if you need to. I just always do it. It's like a habit. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. So we're going to put our hook back in, and if you get confused on which way to put your hook in, you can tell that all those stitches are going like this, so our hook needs to go in this way, if that makes sense. So you're just going to want to follow the loops. But now we're just going to do decreases until it's closed, and at this point you can take out the C-clip. So we can take out the C-clip, and we'll just decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. Until we can't decrease anymore. I think my next decrease is going to be the last one. So once you have the very last decrease up on your hook, you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook, push the back one over the front one, and pull tight. And now we're just going to hide the tail into our duck.
like that. And then it's done. Well, the main body's done. We still have to do the bill and the eyes, but it's done. Yay. So I hope your duck looks okay at this point. Hopefully you're not struggling. I did try to explain slow, but hopefully we're good. Anyways, we're going to want to do the beak next, so you're going to want to get whatever color you want for the beak. I'm going to be using orange, like I said. Um, I've done yellow beaks a lot. To me, yellow beaks look nice with some colors. So you can do whatever color you want. I feel like I need to make some more different colored ducks. I always just do solid color ducks. I just think they look nice. Anyways, so well, we're going to put the... What is it called? Their bill. I think it's a bill. Their beak, whatever. Um, there's like three stitches right in the middle in the front, so just look at the front of your duck. And you can see that there's three stitches that are like right in the middle. So right here. And we're gonna make stitches on these, so we'll make a stitch. And we'll go into the next part. Make a stitch. So we're just gonna do three stitches across the front of the face. Like that. And then we're going to turn, so we're facing this way, we're going to turn so we face this way. And we're going to make stitches in these two loops, so... One... Two... And then we're going to tie into this, so we're going to go through this weird little loop that's not technically a loop. And then we're going to pull a band through everything on our hook. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And that is how you do your duck bill. And then you'll just hide your tail. Like that. And then the eyes. So I'll show you where I put the eyes because there is a very specific spot I put the eyes. So let me go grab my eyes. Okay, so I got my eyes. I have my two beads right here. You're going to want to get two bands that are the color of your duck and a piece of string. So I'm using a piece of dental floss. Um, you can use whatever string. I just find that dental floss works the best because it doesn't fray as easy. Then you're going to get your eye. You're going to thread your eye onto the dental floss. This one's kind of fraying. I might need a new piece. There we go. So you're going to just put it on the string, then you'll put your band on the string, then you'll fold over and go back through the eye. Oh my god, this piece is really fraying. Oh no. Come on. There we go. And you'll just pull the bead onto the band. So we'll do that again. And you get your band. Then you fold over and go back to the bead. Oh, this one went on easier. Okay. So once you have your eyes, um, by the way, if you don't have eyes, you can just get a black band, wrap it four or five times around your hook, and then pull a band through, and it'll work the exact same way. I mean, if you're using safety eyes, you wouldn't have to bother with this, but I don't. I always use beads. So where I put the eyes is I'll go onto the... This band, the same one that has the bill on it, this one, right here, and I'll tie it onto this one. I just find it looks cutest if you have the eyes super close to where the bill is, like that. And then I'll go on the other side and do the exact same thing, so on this one. And I literally, you can see that the stitches on this one I'll go on that same spot. And then tie the other eye. And I always just make sure I like where the eyes are before I tuck in the tails. And I do, so we'll tuck in the tails now. That's just something I've learned from doing a lot of things with bead eyes and attaching. You don't want to tuck anything in until you like where it is or you'll be in trouble. Okay. And then I think that'll be pretty much it for the duck. Yay.
So I hope your duck turned out okay. Um, like I said, I'm sorry, I'm grabbing something. I should pause to grab the thing. Sorry, I was grabbing something because I wanted to give you a, show you a design I've been working on, but I hope you liked this duck tutorial. I hope your duck turned out okay, and I hope this one was more helpful than my other duck tutorial. Um, if you make a duck, definitely share it with me on Instagram. I love to see what you guys make. And yeah. So, like I said, I hope your ducks turn out okay. I'll put all my ducks here so you can see them. Um, there will be some ducks on my Etsy soon, as you can see. I've kind of got a mini army going. So, if you want to buy a duck from me, you can check out my Etsy. The link will be in the description, as well as my Instagram. My other Instagram, and then my Etsy, and my TikTok. So, you can check out any of that if you want to check me out anywhere else. And like I said, I did pause to grab something because I've been working on a design that isn't on Instagram yet. By the time this video is posted, it should be, but... I've been working on a design. That's all I'm going to show you. You can guess what they are. You might be able to tell, you might not. Yeah, sometimes I think I make things that nobody wants and I just make them and then people think they're cute. Like, I make some dumb things. This might be on the list of dumb things. I'll post a photo in the community tab soon, but yeah, they're cute. Oh my god, two of them are missing arms. What happened to their arms? I used off-brand bands because I ran out of caramel bands, but yeah. Anyways, so I hope you liked this tutorial. I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of that design I'm working on. But yeah, I think that is it for this one. So I will see you in the next one. Bye.